team was everywhere, um, but I felt as though um, I came here at a, a really good time, a time where, um, you know, at the time I think um, Monty, um, Coach Williams' wife, just had passed away. The day I landed here, that's the day they um, was at the service, the funeral. And then um, I think like two weeks into it, we was at L.A., and then Sam stands up and, um, and let us know that um, one of our owners had passed away. Then I think like a week later, we come in here and shoot around. I don't see Dion, and then they say Dion brother passed away. So it just was the first three weeks that I was here was um, a lot was going on as far as um, people losing their lives. Um, just tragic um, things were happening. So I think, but after that, I think it made us stronger. Um, we moved on from it, and I think it, towards the end, building up into the playoffs, it made us um, a lot tougher. Mm-hmm. Where did you see the team kind of just make strides in its habits, the way that it operated on the floor? I just think our, our approach, because um, we, we couldn't do as much as we wanted to on the floor, but just seeing guys um, watch film and take whatever coach was saying in the film room and basically um, executing on the, on the floor, that was cool to see. Seeing guys like Ennis um, grow. Seeing guys like um, Steven and um, Dion, um, everybody knew what um, Katie and Russ was going to do. But even see Serge um, grow and, and take those steps and just um, just wanting to just wanting it so bad, so passionate about it. That was cool to see. Do you want to be back here next season? Oh yeah, just had those conversations <laughs> with everybody. Uh, definitely want to be back here, um, but we all know it, it starts with with Kev. And, you know, Kev is, um, I, I think I just read somewhere that, you know, what Nick said, but Kev is everywhere um, to this place. So it starts with him. And I just think the dominoes after that will fall into place. What was it like, play, what was it like playing with Russell as opposed to being on the other side? Um, to tell you the truth, plan, playing against him on the other side, he's so explosive. I had to guard him so many times. And every time he's coming at you, He's in attack mode. You know, some other point guards, you could kind of say, all right, you know, he's going to chill. You know when they're going to attack. But with Russ, Russ is always in attack mode. And I didn't, looking from the outside in, I didn't know Russ was that smart as far as, you know, film work, um, understanding how teams wanted to guard um, us on offense, um, just just the way he watched film on the plane, just things like that because we sit next to each other on the plane always watching film, um, always trying to better himself. Um, if it's his body, um, trying to gain more knowledge from um, Coach Cheeks, um, you know, just talking to everybody, just getting their perspective on what they think about not just his game or anyone else's game, but, you know, how 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 can we win? And I thought that was really cool um, being on this side and learning from him. You were mostly a, a shooting guard with young mm-hmm. players and the Nuggets and all that. You kind of have to make a transition. Yeah, I was I was I was everywhere here. <laughs> I was everywhere. Yeah, that, and that was, that was something. That's something. Um, I just was thinking like, imagine what I can do with these guys with just like a full year. Like I was going through like the growing pains of, um, you know, making mistakes, um, messing up on defense and coverages, but you know my, you know my teammates were covering for me, or you know just me being in a league for you know ten years. Like I could kind of figure it out like on the fly, but most of everything I was doing here was on the fly. Basically, you know, it wasn't it wasn't really much practice time when I first got here. It just was all they just they threw me into the fire, and and it was fun. Um, I enjoyed myself, but um, like you said, it wasn't. I was everywhere. Yeah, and you, normally I'm just knocking down tray balls, locking up on um, defense, making plays um, here and there, but. You know, this year it just was, I had that approach of whatever it takes to win a championship. You know, if you want me to guard the best player, if you want me to bring the ball up, whatever it takes, whatever you think it takes, coach, I'm willing to do it. What did you know about the Thunder coming in, and what do you know now? In other words, what did you learn that you didn't know? Like you, two or three months? like you always hear, you always hear things. Like, I, you know, obviously, you know what stands out, and that's um, Kevin um, and Russ. No surge, those guys, Steven, big strong dude. Um, But I didn't understand, you know, people, a lot of places people say family, family, family. 
this is this organization is all about family. This is our approach. But here they practice what they preach. Like when when I first was traded here, Sam said, if you know, if your family need to come here, if your wife and kids need to relocate here, I'll move mountains for them. And, and he was serious. You know, other places, you know, they'll talk about it, but they won't be serious. You know, but I just the organization, the way things are, are ran, um, the communication, um, everyone is held accountable, no matter who you are, from the first guy to the fifteenth guy, everybody here is um held accountable. And everyone you walk in that arena, everyone is it seemed like everyone is in a battle with you. You know, you walk through them hallways, everyone's slapping your hand, you ready, you ready, we got this tonight. It seemed like everyone's in a battle with you. you talk about everyone's held accountable. What, is, what does that look like? Um so everyone's out. So basically, if if you do something, um, or if I do something on film, and Coach or Sam or whoever would say something to me, they would say the same thing to Kevin and Russ. So everyone is held accountable for their actions. Anybody else? Is it a little strange <laughs> knowing your future sort of waits on somebody? Who, me? Yeah, and in other words, having to wait on the Durant decisions. Yeah, so we talk uh, about the dominoes. Is that? Yeah, I would much rather um, have my future, um, like you said, fall into place like a domino effect, and wait on a guy like Kevin than waiting on someone else. You know, because you know you could you could look Kevin in his eyes. You could you could hear Kevin. You know, talk about OKC. Like you know, his heart is that. You know, so I would much rather you know wait on something like that then um you know wait on somebody who's who's not going to be all time great just put it that way are you pretty confident you going to stick around then the way you're I don't have I don't you know I never you know talk to guys about um any of that stuff but you know hear him talking about you know how proud he was of the team um hear him hear him just saying different things about the the team and how you know, how how we were fighting, you know, in the huddles. Like, you guys are not in the huddles. I know you guys see everyone out there. But just to, like, see those guys in the huddle, like when you're in a battle and we're on the court and we huddle up and just looking each other in the eye, like, you know, like, there's unfinished business here and he want to get it done. Anybody else? I agree. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, man.